Well, well, well. Look what I was able to bring home for the night. What's up, guys? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Thank you so much for joining today. We're going to do something that I've been wanting to do for a while, and tonight I was given permission to do so. This is the 2018 Ford EcoSport, or EcoSport. They actually told me it's pronounced EcoSport now. I, I think you can say it either way, but I'll just say EcoSport just in case. So, the 2018 Ford EcoSport SE. So for those of you who follow Mike's Vehicle Spotlight, my official vehicle touring segment that I post here on YouTube, I recently, uh, I think it was back in January, did a full-on tour of the Echo Sport. It was a fully loaded titanium model, and this is an SE. And of course, I went with the SE because as much as, as nice as the titanium models are, if I were to probably purchase something along the lines of this, I'd be happy with just an SE. An SE has just the right amount of features that I like to look for in, in a car. Now this one is a little more upscale. It's a little more of an upscale SE. This one has the SE convenience package, which is obviously an option, optional package to have for an SE model. And I'm not 100% sure what it entails, but I do know the touchscreen display with navigation is part of that. I'll have to actually look at the brochure a little bit later and um, just kind of look to see what else might be included in the SE convenience package. So there's a couple of reasons why I really wanted to get my hands on the Echo Sport for a test drive. As you can see, it is a pretty small, compact SUV. In fact, it is actually based off of the exact same platform that our 15 Fiesta is based off of. Well, not just the 15, but all Fiestas. The only real difference is the Echo Sport is based off of the all new Ford Fiesta, which is only available in Europe right now. Whereas the States, we still have this current looking Fiesta. But there isn't barely, barely any difference as far as the platform of the Echo Sport compared to the Fiesta. So I wanted to get my hands on the Fiesta, like I said, for a couple of reasons. Number one being that I wanted to see how it actually drove because, you know, I was really skeptical about getting a Fiesta, but once I drove the Fiesta, I fell in love with it. It is such a fun car to drive. And I wanted to see if the Echo Sport was gonna feel close to, you know, feeling like the uh, Fiesta. And so far, I'm, I'm very pleased. But there is another reason why I wanted to bring this one home and actually test drive it. So here's reason number two. And this is more so the big reason why I wanted to bring the car off of the lot and test drive it. This is a one liter turbocharged three cylinder engine. It produces 123 horsepower and 125 pound-feet of torque. And, uh, you know, the Echo Sport is small. Probably really lightweight compared to most other cars. 123 horsepower, three-cylinder. This thing so far, this thing delivers. And I was really impressed. I know if it didn't have a turbo on it, it probably wouldn't be as much of a performer as it is, but hey, one, two, and three. They get the job done. I'm very surprised. Look at how small the oil cap is. <laughs> it's like the engine's tiny. Very interesting setup. So yeah, one liter, three cylinder engine. And we'll obviously get more into that here in a bit. Now since I had recently done a full tour on the Echo Sport, 
I'm not gonna recap all of the specs here. I mean, I could have made this another Mike's Vehicle Spotlight feature, but I figured since I had already done one on the Echo Sport recently, I just really didn't want to throw another full thing together. This one is really just gonna focus on how the test drive, how driving one really is. So, um, if you would like to learn more about you know the actual technical and specs about the Echo Sport. You know, just um, check it out. I'll have the link probably at the end of this video um, for the Echo Sport MVS feature. And then there, you could also um, check out what the Titanium had to offer. And like I said, just the general specs of the Echo Sport. But right now, I'll go ahead and open it up and give you guys a quick tour of what this one is equipped with, and then. We will head on out to the road. So first off, this one, this one does have the proximity key, and with that, you can touch the door handle, and it unlocks for you. Now I love the interior setup. Like I said, uh, a lot of the dashboard design and such is based off of the new Fiesta over in Europe. So. If the new Fiesta ever does hit the States, then it's probably going to look very, very similar to how this one is set up. But I like the colors, I like the I like the seat design on this one in particular. It is a powered seat, including powered backrest, manual lumbar support. We've got power door locks, power windows, power mirrors. The mirrors have the bliss blind spot indicators on them so that's probably a feature included in the um, SE convenience package this is probably included too I don't I don't remember if all echo sports come with keyless entry or not forgot to take my work computer out but there's the back Now, stupid me, I left my tripod from, for this camera in my car back at the dealership. So I can't really demonstrate me sitting in the car like I usually can in a lot of these videos that I've done like this. But just from my point of view, you can see that I can sit in the Echo Sport. I have plenty of leg room. Um, so I have driven this home in this position and uh, I was very comfortable. The back, as with the Fiesta, if you've seen me try to get into the back seat of the Fiesta, from where my seat is now, if somebody taller is driving, you know what? Look at that, I actually got in easier. I got in way easier than I would have in the Fiesta. And surprisingly enough, I'm actually kind of comfortable back here for how small it is. The back seats, they seem to be, be uh, firm. One headrest is up, one headrest is down. There we go. Now I doubt I could sit back here at all with two other people here. And my head also touches the ceiling. So this probably wouldn't be a good ride, again, for people who are taller, longer legs. Up front, I have plenty of headroom. There's like, it's kind of dome-shaped up toward the front here. Oh no. Oh no, they are out. Already? Ah, great. Just what I needed. Anyway, moving on. A nice thing about the back too is there's actually a uh, three-prong power outlet back here. And this this does have a fold-down armrest with two cup holders. Armrest is at pretty decent height, I guess. This cup, the cup holder plastic might get in the way of comfort. Here's the padded area. But it is what it is. Now one of the cooler things about the back of the Echo Sport is that it does not have 
a lift gate. It has, make sure that wasp didn't go into there. It has a swing gate. You don't see too many cars anymore that have these swing gates. So this is like the first one that I've seen in a while that offers it to you. This is the mats and such. This is actually a shelf here and it slides into these little slots so you can actually elevate the floor a little bit. I'm not gonna do it now because, well, one hand it's kind of difficult from this angle. It's got a little tiny cargo, cargo cover. And more importantly, when you fold the seats down, you, you get a pretty decent amount of uh, cargo space for how tiny the car is. The only downside that I see with this is you have to use the floor to kind of maybe make it even a little bit. Because as you can see, the seats aren't exactly level with the entire back of the car. But I doubt anybody would ever use this for any major hauling anyway. Now here from the actual driver's view. It's warm in here. We're at 82 degrees today, guys. <laughs> One of the things that I really like about being behind the wheel of this car is I love the new gauge cluster design. It is still similar to what's in like the current uh, Fiesta, how it's got a tack to the left, speedometer to the right. And even the way the, the needles are hidden toward the top of the, uh, you know, this area here. Um, but it does include a new temperature gauge also. Uh, the big thing here is this little display. This, uh, this driver information center now includes a lot, of, um, a lot of nice things to access. Uh, I'm glad that this car was actually out of um, transport mode so I can... <laughs> Kind of show you know all of this this information here but um it's just it's a nice clear display um it's very crisp to look at um so i just think that that's a nice improvement as far as the little smaller car segments you know that ford has had you know so and this little my view thing you can have it display a couple of other various things if you want the calm screen doesn't really show anything. I think it's uh, I think it's pretty nice. The big thing that I like about the interior is the all new touch screen. And as you can see, it's like a free floating screen. Um, and I say this because, you know, our Fiesta has uh, the older My Ford Touch display. And as much as I like the screen recessed into the dashboard like it, it looks awesome but it is sometimes kind of difficult to get into because it's so far back and it's a lot smaller in the Fiesta too but this one is right here it is up close and I think anybody you know both passengers could have easy access to it um, this stereo system I'm not sure if it's included in the uh, in the convenience package or not, but it's a great sounding system. So um, I've enjoyed it uh, bringing it home. It sounds good. Um, of course, it's it's got you know sync, so it'll connect with the phone. And like I said, this one also has um, navigation. Um, so it's like I said, it's a very crisp and smooth running display. I, I think that's a very nice improvement that they've made with this. It, you also have other vehicle apps and such. Travel Link, give you movie listings in the area. Um, we can look at the weather, which is gorgeous today, finally. Fuel prices. Oh, and of course your other vehicle settings. This one might have... Uh, yeah, it does have ambient lighting. Um, we'll probably see that here in a bit. Looks like it's not on, but we'll go with the uh, you know the ice blue, the traditional ice blue. See how that looks later. But 
I think it's a really good good screen. I like it. The only downside that I have to this is because and because I'm old school, there's no CD player. So this system does not include a CD player anymore. Um, it's all digital now, which is down here toward the bottom. You have two USB ports, and do you have anything in here? No, not this one. That is a deep console for how small it is. So it gives you two USB ports. I'm really surprised it doesn't give you an auxiliary input jack. Uh, so I guess you have to use the USB ports now. Um, as you can see, standard uh, automatic climate controls with the air running. This one does have heated seats, so that could be included with the um, that package. Um, it does have auto start and stop, which I didn't realize until I got on the road. 12 volt power outlet. Same transmission in the uh, Fiesta, the six speed power shift. Um, auto manual, I guess if you want to call it that, uh, with the select shift shifting feature. Two cup holders, handbrake, small storage pocket. Well, that may have lights, maybe not, I don't know. And uh, this glove compartment. Now this might be the glove compartment that is also used as a cooler, a climate controlled thing. I'm, I'm not sure, I forget. But um, I know they offer that. I don't know if this is one or not. <laughs> uh, sun visors with overhead lights. This one's also got the moonroof. Yeah, two map lamps, and I, I think that's it. I think I pretty much covered uh, everything. So since I forgot the tripod in my car that I would have set up back here behind me, and since some of you guys don't like it when I wear the head cam because of the actual, you know, movement and stuff. I don't really know how I'm going to film this now. Um, I might just have to have my wife come with me as, you know, we have to go get uh, dinner tonight anyway. So um, I guess we'll just film the trip out there and I will give you guys my take on how the Echo Sport performs. Um, other than that, I don't really have any other solution to... I don't want to be filming it one-handed, you know, the entire time. So I think I'll just go the route with her being here. So stick around after these messages. So I guess the first thing that I want to kind of uh, talk about as far as how the car performs and such is the handling of it. It really doesn't handle too far from the Fiesta. It doesn't feel heavy like uh, an SUV. I mean, it, it definitely doesn't even feel like my Escape. It just literally feels like you're driving a car. It has very, very easy steering. Um, and it's very responsive in my opinion. I think we're gonna go around the curb here. Oh, it just, it's hugging the, the corners very, very nicely. Now, of course, I'm not going to go all out and, you know, actually try to lose control of the car, <laughs> you know, but um, it really does feel like it handles uh, really well. The ride itself, how do you feel about the ride? It's very, it, I think it's pretty comfortable. Yeah. It's, it's, it feels like a pretty solid car. I don't hear anything rattling inside the cabin. There's no road noise. It's very quiet. And that kind of takes me to the next thing that I was really eager to to see how well it drove is the three-cylinder engine. And um, you know, I think if it were a three-cylinder engine, it probably would not have the amount of pep that this does have. I mean, it does uh, seem to take off very nicely uh, from a stop and such. But if it weren't for the turbocharger on it, I don't think. Um, this car would have as much enthusiasm as it does. 
Now the other engine offered in the Echo Sport is a two liter Duratec four cylinder that's not turbocharged. And um, I, offhand, I can't remember if it makes less or if it makes more than this, but I know for sure this one here packs out only 123 horsepower. I mean, technically, our Fiesta pumps out a little more horsepower than that, I think, or it's close to it, and it's not turbocharged. Matter of fact, that engine's even bigger than this. But you don't really, you don't really feel the getup until it's out of first gear. This is how I feel. Once it's out of first gear and you get into second, then you can start to really feel the pull that the engine's doing. It still amazes me at how fast these like auto start and stops can start up so fast and be ready just as you put your foot on the gas. It's amazing. I'm honestly still kind of skeptical about them because of the overall wear and tear that it might make on the starter for years and years down the road, but the only other thing that I can really think of is that the starters are designed to constantly be running and such. And as I mentioned earlier, you could always turn that feature off, but in most cases, I mean, why would you? This thing's already supposed to be pretty fuel efficient, so why not just kind of give it that extra extra little bit of fuel efficiency by not wasting gas while the car's, um, you know, while the car's off. Fun fact, I used to live on this street. In fact, we're gonna, we're gonna pass my, my old house, my old childhood house. The one right here next to this, next to the blue truck. I used to live there. In fact, uh, a lot of some of the vlogs that you've seen in the in the past were filmed at that house from like the old home video footage. It's at a hundred miles. I just realized that. So I was here when the car turned a hundred miles. How special. What year is this car? 18. They, they let you take a new, new, new car mm -hmm. that has no miles on it. Oh, it had like 91 when I took it. Wow. <laughs> it had 91 on it. The one thing that I really like is the new screen because it sticks out more and it's, it's easier to get to. Because like the other one is, you know, recessed in the, into the dash. But this one is very, it's very clear too. I like how clear it is. Does this have the lights and stuff down there? It does. As a matter of fact, I think, uh, oh, probably not until it gets dark. I don't think they stay on all the time like yours does. But you get that through uh, there. Huh. And you can adjust how bright you want them to be, too. Oh, wow. That red one would probably be better if it was lighter than lighter than what yours is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't driven it in manual mode yet because I haven't felt like it. <laughs> but I'm expecting that it's going. it would feel the same as it does uh, driving the, the Fiesta. But I am kind of curious to, to see how responsive the buttons are because sometimes you get a little bit of a lag when you want to shift. And... Um, Unlike an actual sports car, as soon as you hit the button, it doesn't shift right away. So I wonder if if this may shift on a dime when you push the button or not. It really 
makes no sense to put it in now, but... Okay, so it's in fourth now. If I push it down to fifth, will it go into fifth? No. I'm not over 40, so I can't do it. <laughs> and I can't go over 40 right now. No, it lags. That's cool though. It'll tell you on this screen how when to shift it if you don't know when to do it. Oh, it makes the menu Matic feature a little easier for people who maybe have never driven a manual and don't know how to shift a car. So that's good. It's the following day now, and I have to get the Echo Sport back to the dealership. So, in the meantime, let me go ahead and recap all of the things that I love and or hate about driving the Echo Sport. So honestly, it, I've only had the car, I've only been able to have the car for, you know, just one night. And, um, you know, that's maybe not the best amount of time to critique a car fully, of course. But unfortunately, there's really nothing else that I can do about it. It has to go back today. So I honestly don't think I've had enough time to really find anything con about it. For the most part, I, I like it a lot. Um, it's a nice little SUV that drives just like a car. So if you're somebody who really likes the way a car feels and you don't want that heavy SUV type feeling, um, this is it. This is probably going to be the car for you. Uh, I would not mind having one of these myself, um, but I do like having a bigger car. So that's why I usually will stick with, you know, my escape or newer escape in the future but who knows I mean maybe one day I'll be like you know I'll just do this instead but I don't have anything to complain about it it's fun to drive um, it feels pretty much just like the Fiesta only higher a little bit higher of course I love how the dashboard is set up uh, it feels like a solid vehicle the the touchscreen display here a little closer to the driver and front passenger is great uh, it's a lot better than the recessed um, display that was in the Fiesta. I think it, it's just overall a good looking car. The little three cylinder engine is, it really is impressive to me anyway. Um, you know, it, it does get up and go uh, for, for how small the engine is. So I'm pleased with that. Um, the power shift right now in this one feels good. I don't feel any shutters of any kind. It seems to shift. Uh, decently on response and such um, but like the Fiesta if you're in manumatic mode and you go to shift using the push buttons it does not shift right away there's usually like a second lag uh, of some sort so that is I guess just pretty common with the power shifts um, but nonetheless it's it's a fun little uh, a fun little feature to use visibility I didn't talk about that it's not so bad um, of course, if you're looking out this last window here, the little last window uh, at the far back, there's not much to look at. There's mostly all pillar back there. But you get a nice little rear view back here, and of course this one has the backup camera that shows up on the display screen once it's in reverse. So that's another uh, plus. The seats are comfortable, the ride is comfortable, the ride is quiet. Brakes are pretty good for such a small car. It does stop uh, pretty quick. It's got, you know, nice little fuel efficient, uh, you know, features like the, uh, the three cylinder, of course, is very fuel efficient, as well as the auto start stop feature, uh, which is something I still have to get used to. <laughs> Overall, I think that's really all that I have to say about it. Um, I really hope that this, you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it really didn't go according to plan yesterday, uh, because the little GoPro camera died and I, was gonna I used it up here for a little bit to try to get you know a view going here but um, during our, our little drive yesterday but unfortunately it died 
and I also had a, a migraine yesterday, so I hope I was, I didn't even watch the video yet because I, <laughs> I just was so sick and I didn't want to even start working on it. So hopefully everything that came out yesterday <laughs> is, uh, is good. But, um, yeah, that's really all that I have to say about the Echo Sport. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Also check out teespring.com slash stores slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for any merchandise that you would like to buy for Mike's Vehicle Spotlight or the vlog series, t-shirts and stickers at this moment. And if you want to see the complete MVS tour of the 2018 Ford Echo Sport, the link will be showing up on this screen here shortly. So be sure to check it out if you want all of the specs about the Echo Sport. In the meantime, I have to get this car back. I want to thank you very much again for watching. It means a lot. I'll see you later. Take care. Do you know where you want to go eat? Have you decided where you wanted to go eat yet? Nope. Have you decided where you'd like to go eat? Nope. <laughs>